Determination of protein content is a common proximate test. This parameter is very important for the analysis of food and feed sample. This video represents the procedure of protein analysis by the Geldals method. Welcome to the channel Microchems Experiments. Be with us, be a laboratory expert. We can analyze a sample for the crude protein content by following four steps. Digestion, distillation, titration and calculation. To do the test, we need some apparatus and equipment, like balance machine, acid-proof gloves. Among the glassware we need 100 ml volumetric flask, pipette, pipette filler funnel, measuring cylinder of 100 ml and 50 ml, gel dolls flask and conical flask. Finally we need a protein analyzer machine, it could be either one manual or automated. In this video we will use a manual protein analyzer. For automated protein analyzer each step should be followed sequentially. To carry out the whole test we need some chemicals and reagents. For sample digestion we need concentrated sulfuric acid and catalyst. For distillation we need 4% boric acid and 40% sodium hydroxide solution. And finally for titration we need 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid and methyl red indicator solution. Chemical and reagent preparation is very crucial for any test. So we must prepare the chemical or reagents properly. The detailed procedure of chemical and reagent preparation for protein analysis is given in the second part. So please take a look at our second video of protein analysis. The link is given in the description section of this video. So let's do the protein analysis. First of all we need to digest the sample by concentrated sulfuric acid in the presence of the catalyst and heat. Wear protective gloves and musk. Use acid-proof gloves where necessary. Gather everything you need to prepare the sample before go for the digestion. Weight 2 gram of homogenized portion of sample in a waiting boat. Label the gel dolls flask with sample number or sample ID. Add the weighted sample into the pre-labeled gel dolls flask. Again weight 2 grams of catalyst. Add the catalyst to the same flask that contains the sample.
Now we have to add 20 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. Shake slowly to mix the sample with the added sulfuric acid and catalyst. Now sample is ready to digest. Finally place the sample containing flask on the digester unit. Turn on the digester and heat the flask at 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. If you use a manual digester, don't forget to turn on the water circulation pump of fume receiving unit. Run the digester for 2 hours. After finishing the digestion, we will get a clear and green color digested juice of the sample, which will be used in the distillation step of this method. Cool the flask at room temperature. Before going to the distillation, we have to dilute the digested juice with distilled water. Gather everything you need to do this dilution. Wash the glassware with distilled water. Pour 15 to 20 milliliters of distilled water into the flask and shake to mix with digested juice. Now pour it into a 100 milliliters volumetric flask. Use funnel to avoid the loss. Do the same thing for three times by washing the flask for making sure that no digestive residue is left in the digestion flask. Now add water to the volumetric flask to make the final volume of 100 milliliters. Now we are ready to go for the distillation.
Measure 30 milliliters of 4% boric acid. And take into a conical flask. Place this conical flask in the distillation unit where the distillate will be collected. The distillate will be collected in the same flask that already contains 30 milliliters of 4% boric acid solution. Arrange and set all other parts of distillation unit. Add 10 milliliters of diluted digestive juice to the distillation flask. Now add 50 milliliters of 40% sodium hydroxide. Finally add 50 milliliters of distilled water to the distillation flask. Run the distillation unit and heat at 150 to 200 degrees Celsius. Don't forget to turn on the water circulation pump of the condenser. Collect approximately 100 milliliters of distillate and then turn off the distillation. Now it's time to do the titration. Take 0.1 normal of standardized hydrochloric acid and burette. Note the initial burette reading. Add few drops of methyl red indicator solution to the conical flask that contains the collected distillate. The color of the distillate will be changed from the transparent to yellow. Titrate the distillate with 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid.
Stop the titration when color is changed into orange. Note the final burette reading. Now we are going to our final step to calculate the protein content. We will arrange all the values and readings that we know from the test in the right side of the board. And we will do the calculation in the left side of the board. So let's arrange the values first. We took 2.0471 gram of sample to test. So the sample weight WS is 2.0471 gram. Now we need the volume of 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid that was used in the titration. We can get this volume by subtracting the final burette reading from the initial reading. So the final burette reading is 38.4 minus. The initial burette reading is 35.6. By subtracting these two values we can get the V1 is 2.8 milliliters. Normality of HCl is 0.1. If the standardization of HCl showed another value other than 0.1, then we would use that standardized value here instead of 0.1 normal. We used hydrochloric acid in this titration, that's why we know the acid factor F1 is 1. We all know the molecular weight of nitrogen is 14.007. So the value of MWN is 14.007. So here are some factors based on the sample type provided by this method. We used 10 milliliters for the distillation from the total 100 milliliters digested juice. That's why the dilution factor F2 is 10. Now we will do the calculation. We have to solve two equations to find the crude protein percent. However this method is developed based on the estimation of total nitrogen from the sample to determine the protein content. That is why we need to find the nitrogen percent first. We can find the nitrogen percent from the first equation. Put the values in the first equation from the right side of the board. V1 is the volume of HCl which is 2.8. N1 is the normality of HCl which 0.1. F1 is the acid factor which is 1. MWN is the molecular weight of nitrogen which is 14.007. WS is the sample weight which is 2.0471. And 10 comes from the equation. By solving this equation we get the nitrogen percent is 0.19158. Now we will use this value in the second equation. So here is nitrogen percent value 0.19158. We tested wheat sample, that's why we will put the value of factor 5.70 as given by this method. Dilution factor is 10. By solving the equation 2, we can find the crude protein of the sample is 10.92%. This is the value we wanted to find throughout the test. 